Hello and welcome to another GCSE revision video and in this video we're going to look at expanding two sets of brackets. Okay, so let's expand out 2 plus 3 into 4 plus 5. Now we would always evaluate brackets first according to order of priorities and 2 plus 3 is 5 and 4 plus 5 is 9, so we would expect our answer to come out to be 5 times 9, which is 45. Now the key to expanding out brackets is to make sure everything in the first set of brackets is multiplied by everything in the second. Now one way to do this is to take advantage of the distributive property of multiplication. Pretend everything in the second brackets is just a single term. Now the distributive property of multiplication says that if we have b plus c in brackets and we multiply all of that by a, then that's equal to a times b plus a times c. And if you remember the distributive property as a into b plus c instead of b plus c into a, just remember that the commutative property of multiplication dictates that it doesn't matter which way round we multiply. Okay, so to expand out the 2 plus 3 into 4 plus 5, we can multiply the 4 plus 5 term by the 2 and then multiply the 4 plus 5 term by the 3. So we can take our 2 plus 3 into 4 plus 5 and distribute it out as 2 into 4 plus 5 plus 3 into 4 plus 5. We can now expand out each term separately. Taking the 2 into 4 plus 5 term, that gives us 2 times 4 plus 2 times 5. Now taking the 3 into 4 plus 5 term, that gives us 3 times 4 plus 3 times 5. Combine the 2 gives us 2 times 4 plus 2 times 5 plus 3 times 4 plus 3 times 5. And here's our 2 plus 3 into 4 plus 5 in its expanded form. Let's just check that we've got the answers right. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 5 is 10, 10 plus 8 is 18, 3 times 4 is 12, 12 plus 18 is 30, 3 times 5 is 15, 15 plus 30 is 45, and of course 5 times 9 is 45. An easy way to remember this is FOIL. FOIL is an acronym standing for first, outside, inside, last. Multiply the first terms in each brackets. Then multiply the outside terms in each brackets. Then multiply the inside terms in each brackets. Then multiply the last terms in each brackets. Which again gives us 2 times 4 plus 2 times 5 plus 3 times 4 plus 3 times 5, which is 45. OK, well, so much for the theory. Let's have a go at putting that into practice. Uh, let's try expanding out something like x plus 1 into x plus 2. OK, so when we expand that out, we have our x times x is x squared. plus x times 2 is 2x, plus 1 times x is x, plus 1 times 2 is 2. So that's equal to x squared plus 3x plus 2. That's when we combine these like terms here. Now you might have noticed that this term here, the 2, is actually equal to 1 
times 2. And this term here, the 3, is equal to 1 plus 2. OK, let's try something else. Let's try something a bit more general. Let's try x plus a into x plus b. Well, again, that's equal to x times x is x squared plus x times b is bx plus a times x is ax plus a times b is ab. Again, we can combine the like terms here. So bx plus ax is equal to a plus bx. So this whole thing simplifies to x squared plus a plus b times x plus a times b. And now we can see that it doesn't matter what numbers we have for a and b. The middle term will always be a plus b. And the third term will always be a times b. This will come in very handy in the next video when we look at factorising quadratic equations. OK, let's try another example. In this case, we'll try multiplying out brackets squared, a plus b squared. Well, the definition of squared is a plus b is any number times itself. So if a plus b is squared, then that means a plus b times itself. So that's a plus b times a plus b, which is equal to a times a is a squared plus b times a is ba, plus a times b is ab, plus b times b is b squared, which is equal to, given that ba and ab are exactly the same due to the commutative property of multiplication, then that's just 2 times ab, so that's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And that's actually a useful relationship to memorise that a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Another useful variant on that is a minus b squared. Again, that's equal to a minus b times a minus b. Because a number squared is a number multiplied by itself. So that's equal to a times a, which is a squared a times negative b is negative ab. Negative b times a is negative ab. And then negative b times negative b is positive b squared. Because a negative times a negative is a positive. So that's equal to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So those are two quite important relationships to know. One of them is a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And the other one is a minus b squared is equal to 
a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. And here's the tricky thing. With a minus b squared, a lot of students mistakenly put a negative sign here on the b squared. That is a positive. A negative times a negative is a positive, so don't make that mistake. If you are going to memorise that a minus b squared is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, always remember that that term, the b squared term, is positive. What would happen, though, if we had something like a plus b multiplied by a minus b? Well, let's expand out and find out. a times a is a squared. a times negative b is minus ab. b times a is positive ab. And then b times negative b is negative b squared. So when we come to simplify this, we've got a positive AB term here and a negative AB term here. So these two values are exactly the same value but opposite signs, so they cancel out. So we end up with A squared minus B squared. And this relationship is called the difference of two squares. And it's really good to remember that A squared minus b squared is the same as a plus b times a minus b. OK, I think we'll do one more example. OK, so what if you're given three sets of brackets to multiply out? Something like, say, x plus 1 times x plus 2 times x plus 3. Or perhaps you might be given four, five or six sets of brackets to multiply out. Well, we do it exactly the same way. We just pick any two brackets, multiply them out, and then take the result and multiply that by the next set of brackets. So in this case, we've got x plus 1 times x plus 2 is equal to x squared plus 2x plus x plus 2, which is equal to x squared plus 3x plus 2. And then all of that, so that's x squared plus 3x plus 2, is then multiplied by the other set of brackets, so that's into x plus 3, which again is equal to, so this time we've got x squared times x, which is x cubed, 3x times x, which is 3x squared, plus 2 times x is 2x, plus, this time everything's multiplied by the 3, so that's x squared times 3 is 3x squared, plus 3x times 3 is 9x, plus, and then 2 times 3 is 6. So that simplifies to, well, we've got 1x cubed term, and now we can combine the x squared term, so we've got 3x squared plus 3x squared is 6x squared. And now we've got a 2x and a 9x, so that's 11x. And we've only got one numerical term, so that's plus 6. And so, x plus 1 
into x plus 2 into x plus 3 is equal to x cubed plus 6x squared plus 11x plus 6. So again, if you have more than two brackets, just multiply it out the same way you would if there was just two brackets, and then take the result of that multiplication, and then multiply that by the next set of brackets, and so on until you've finished all the brackets. Okay, I hope that was helpful. I'd like to wish you all the best with your revision, and all the best with your exams, and I'll see you in another video. Bye.